throw it all and all that. Fuck with it, man. I appreciate that, big homie. Definitely appreciate that, sir. Got some, uh, got some club bangers over there. We're working on a few more, man. We're trying to have a tank full of them. Tank full of club bangers? Oh, you oh. trying to show off with the shit? No, not really. I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to have a good show like that. I oh, okay. You're talking about with it. So okay. when I perform, I, mean, I want everybody to rock, but, but not just for that one record. But that's showing off. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with showing off, but that's what you trying to do. You trying to show off with the shit. Hey, well, as long as you DJ and we both doing it. You trying to make the other <laughs> artists look bad. Not really. Just make myself elevate. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> make the other motherfuckers look bad. That's why I try to do They need to elevate themselves too. <laughs> yeah. Step it up, motherfuckers. That's good shit, man. So uh, the second record, though, uh, all that, what's the uh, inspiration uh, behind that? Don't tell me another strip club. No, that was actually true. Yeah, that, that wasn't nothing but a <laughs> That was like, if anybody you know Atlanta, that wasn't nothing but DOA, Peaches, Follies, and Blue Flame. Okay. We was in there, and uh, you can't, you don't believe some of the shit you see in there is real. Nope. That's no bull. I'm trying to think of that. Uh, it was a new strip club. Well, it ain't new, but it's my first time being in Atlanta. Um, it was a few months, uh, actually about almost a year ago. I was down there for the Core DJs conference, and uh, Damn, we had an after party or some shit. This shit was far out though. Damn, I it might have been the flame. No, it wasn't the flame. It wasn't Follies. Damn. Was it DOA? Nah. Was it Beaches? What's it called? Beaches of Atlanta? Nah, that wasn't neither. That so wasn't it either? So many fucking strip clubs. Magic City, in Magic City, nah, in the city, so that wasn't it. wasn't Magic City. Uh, that, that's old school. That's yeah. The old one. Um, whatever it was, like. Stilettos? Huh, that was it. Stilettos? I think that. No, no, that's not it. I'm you sure? That might be it. It's, I don't know. Whatever. I'm missing. I think I'm missing one. But I think I don't. Like, I don't play them all. My folks were telling me like, "Yo, this is the ratchet joint, man." I stepped in there, and I don't know if it because it was uh, it was uh, it was something else going on. This oh uh, the big uh, jam, the jam that the radio station does was going on that same birthday week. band. Birthday bands, yeah. Oh yeah, it, it, the city's crazy. Yeah, so. I don't know if it's because it was that shit going on that we had the after party for the core DJs conference, but I walked in that bitch. It was like seventy bitches walking around. No, that's not that's normal. That's on Tuesday. Jesus fucking Christ. It's thirty. It's thirty. It's thirty for Tuesday for breakfast. It'd be thirty of them in there while you eat your steak and eggs. For breakfast. For for breakfast. I don't know if I want to be in a strip club for breakfast. Hey, no, <laughs> you no nah, people can handle their business in breakfast. Like it, some of the best meetings happen when you eat steak and look at that. And looking at ass. And looking at ass. <laughs> Shoot, I done been on dates in there. How does that work out? I had fun regardless, even if the date went bad. <laughs> it's a win-win situation. So I was like, so I'm looking at something. So we good regardless. How, how, how long you say you been in Atlanta now? I've been down there for two years. And what, what made you say, all right, let me make this move today? Um... I need to make bigger moves. I need to spread. We need to market in more than one place. Um, I felt like I was getting trapped inside 275. And then it actually helped because when people see you grinding in other places, that's when they're more susceptible to it. Right, 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 right. You know, you know what's funny, man? I don't know if um, Cincinnati is like this. But every place, every place, every other city I talk to people from, they all have the kind, same kind of mentality. Like here, here in the DMV, especially in Baltimore, uh, most of the artists have a mentality that it's like a crabs in the bucket mentality. But I tell people like it's like that no matter what city you go to if you're from that city. So do you, do you feel like it took you to get out of uh, out of Cincinnati to start getting getting the um, notoriety that you've been trying to get? Yeah, completely. Real shit. Real shit. It's it's like bro, it's like real talk. Like it's like if I sold weed, but everybody on the block sold weed. So I went somewhere and took my weed somewhere else, and then they're like, yo. Yo, he got some good weed. Word? Well, let me see what his weed really like is. Even though he's been trying to sell us weed for the last six years. But your, and, weed, but your weed might be just like this nigga whose weed is but, right there. But, the but they're hearing it from somewhere else, so it sounds yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds better when you're hearing it from somewhere else. People was on some bullshit overall. But nah, but it, it doubles up, though. It helps. Because then the people in Atlanta, they talking. But the people yeah. in Cincinnati talking. So it's just a big circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. So, so what would you say is your... um. Yeah, the, the thing that you hate most about that kind of transition, like between having to, having to leave your hometown. What I hate most is that because it's the same record. 
That's what, what that's what's irritating. What do you mean the same record? I, I gave Cincinnati throw it out first. Oh, okay. <laughs> like okay, I gave them I throw it out first. And then they was like, all right, it's cool. And I went with the same approach in different environments. Mm. And then it was appreciated. Now it's like, oh, nah, he ours. Come, come he back. Ours. Come back. Now they want to claim you. Now they like, oh, oh or I now moved. He, oh, I moved. Oh, he really <laughs> gone. He really ain't come. He ain't come back. He just come visit. We, like we thought that nigga was just gonna go for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> when they call, like, hey, I need you to do a show. You know it's a price tag now because I gotta fly back, right? So when, when I could have performed for free, you ain't want it. Right. <laughs> so so um, I, so I, with that being said, I take it hometown is receiving it well right now. Yeah, it's picking it's picking up way heavier. In two years, I've easily surpassed what I did the previous seven. So so. Like hit, hit here in the DMV, we have a whole bunch of cats that we call uh, local celebrities, so to speak. And most of these cats ain't never left the city. You got one or two that have, but for the most part, most of them haven't left the city, and they get a buzz here, and they get really uh, content with that buzz. Now I'm sure there are artists like that in Cincinnati. I preach. Now, now with you making the moves that you made, do you feel like you've surpassed those artists already? Um, on a larger standpoint, of yeah, but. In the city, it's about the same. Okay. In the city, it's about the same. Like, I get love. Like, I, I walk in the club. Oh, Prick name in the building. Like, I get that. But I get that in multiple places. They get it one place. And it, it ain't until they, they see you all over Instagram and social media and all that shit with all the, the futures and the ditties and the... the it ain't the even got to be the futures and, like and the ditties. That. It could be just a smaller... It could just be I'm in compound and they playing Throw It All in compound. No, no. What I was going to say is... For, for the audience there to actually respect you on that higher level than that local celebrity. Oh, it, yeah. it, it, it would take that type of bullshit. No, it wouldn't even take that much. It's just it's gonna take this the next record, the mm -hmm. next one. Like we've been doing, uh, uh, we've been doing trial and error with Throw It Off. Okay. Like, we've been seeing where it's gonna work, seeing how we gonna do this layout, seeing right. this. We've been doing that with this record. So with this next record, yeah, that's what's gonna, that's what that's what it's gonna be. And how how long you been working this one? This next record? No, the uh, the throw it off. Uh, about two. Two years? Yeah, because it was right before I moved when I dropped it, and they didn't care, and people didn't care. And you know what? I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you said that because um, like I tell artists this shit all the time. Like if your record don't work in this city, take it to another city and keep working this shit. Uh, and you're pretty much a prime example of what I tell artists all the time. So I want to get your um your take on the reasoning why I already know. But the world needs to hear it from other people sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and, and, and like I said, you're, you're experiencing this shit. First hand. First hand, exactly. So, um, give them the reason why you need to move like that and, and sample your, sample, pretty much sample your product in different markets. Every market is not going to take things the same. You just might not be living in a market for your core demographic. Right. Like, so on a business sense, like Coca-Cola doesn't just sell to Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Coca-Cola has to sell to multiple cities because there's some places where people don't drink Coke. Yeah. That doesn't mean you stop selling your product. Exactly. Like in the music industry, people don't get, you have to, for, to be successful, you have to sell 500,000 singles. It's 300 million people in the United States. Yeah. So I only got to be hot to one out of every 600 people. Yeah. I'm going to find my 600 people. <laughs> <laughs> that's some real shit. You're going to find that 600. Shit, that's, that's uh, you know, looking at it from a number standpoint, that makes sense. I never really broke down from a number standpoint. I mean, I always thought about it like that. Like, in my, okay, in my high school, I wasn't the nigga. I was. So, so I, I mean, <laughs> but was I going to not get pussy? No. <laughs> so I went to other schools. I so I went to other <laughs> schools. But then it became that weed syndrome, because then it was like, how I even know this chick at this school? Yeah. And how I even know this chick at this yeah. school? So when we start playing these schools, that's when they start talking like, huh. So then they came back around full circle again. This dude is everywhere. Gotta be, man. I was the first one in high school with a car, so I was out. This dude dropping pipe at all the schools. <laughs> <laughs> he is a professional pipe layer. Hey, I'm saying, man. It's all good, man. Well, shit, man. Um, that's funny. 
talking <laughs> shit though. Like, we ain't really think about that shit. No, nah, it's just real. Like, uh, no, nah, I'm thinking about my, my high school. Like, like oh, yeah, it's very simple. Yeah, in high school, <laughs> I wasn't the guy. Like, I wasn't like I, I wasn't no lame. Like, I played basketball, football, had a car. Yeah, yeah. Like, I worked, and then I, like, I started working in Champ Sports in the mall. Yeah. But it was still we had we still had that uh, what Martin say the pretty Ricky what they yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, it. We that, had one of them. It was that pretty dude that got that that got all the bitches. We had one of them, and it wasn't me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. was I gonna not? Was I gonna keep losing? No. <laughs> I just went in other places where it worked. <laughs> right, 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 right. So you gotta do the do the music. Treat the music. Treat the music like the hose, man. Hey, if one don't work, shoot, shoot, not, shoot your shot somewhere else. You gotta shoot like Iverson. Shoot. His percentage wasn't always good. Be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. No bullshit. <laughs> no bullshit. Man, so um, as far as artists in the game right now, who is it that you uh, who you listen to right now? Who you fucking with? Uh, right now or just period or just who uh, I think is hot right now? Period. Uh, Fab. Okay. Always listen to Fab. Always. Um, okay. I'm waiting on his. I'm waiting on his next joint to drop. Yeah, he got a joint with uh, Kiss coming out. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on that. That's gonna be dope. Jason Rich Friday shit. Yeah, that's it's gonna, gonna be, be dope. Dope if they drop it tomorrow for Friday the 13th. That would be that would be crazy. That would be. You dope. should be you should be a part of uh, Def Jam's marketing for that. I'm gonna fucking call him. <laughs> Soon as if, if you're listening, you, you might have to be a part of Def Jam marketing. For that. But I listen to a little bit of everything, listening. man. I listen to everybody, everything. Like I said, I listen to Fab. I listen to Migos. I listen to, like, I listen to, we talking Baltimore, I'm waiting on Los to drop something new. Okay. Shout like, I think Los. Los is one of the dopest rappers, just straight ability, yeah. ever. Okay. That's so, like, homie. I'm waiting on him to drop something new. Yeah, that's the homie, man. Um, Los has been dope for a while. A I remember, time. I first seen Los, I remember it was, uh, where he was at the park with Carmelo and Cassidy. Okay. That was the first time I seen Los. He said, uh... Somebody want to battle me, they going to die in four bars like my cell phone battery. I was like, yo, he's nice. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? He's nice. So, yeah, Lo's been kept, like, on a battle tip, I, I don't think it's too many that can fuck with that kid. That's what I'm saying, straight rapping? Yeah. Man, look. Yeah. So, yeah, I listen to a few people. I try to keep my... And then people like him motivate me. That's okay. what I need to need. I just start writing. Forget right. making a hit. I just start writing at that point. All right, make, make you want to sharpen your pencil a little bit. That's when I start sparring sessions. All right. So, so, so you said Lowe's Fab, uh, give me two more. Let me see, Lowe's Fab, uh, let me see, Migos, um, who else? Who else? I rock with uh, King Louie, he out of Chicago. All right, I yes, listen man. to him. Yeah, um, you know, on a little while, uh, Stally, Ohio. Okay. Um, let me see, who else I listen to? I mean, I'm, I'm still, like, you know, I still listen, I listen to Ross. But, like, but, but who, who, are the, who are the ones that you would say inspired you from, from the beginning of your career? Fab. Okay. Cause Fab can spit, he can but he can hit. still make a hit. Yeah. And that's what most dudes can't realize. Like I can make a throw at all. And he has but long, and he has longevity. Complete and people don't understand how he does that and how he keeps reinventing himself. Yeah. Over literally he came out of 01. Cause the motherfucker knows how to spit. I mean, that's he, yeah, that's he, that's he, becoming he, lost. He's been out since before 01. I mean that's when the first album dropped. Yeah, Ghetto, so. Ghetto, Ghetto Fabulous came out with one, but yeah, he was yeah, fabulous for it. He was on them, he was on them cool safe for like yeah. three years before that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's who I look up to. Like, yeah, I'm trying to have that career. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's um, that's one of the best answers I've heard. Cause I ask a lot of people that question. That's one of the best answers I heard. And I get I get a lot of like, future and a lot of man, look a lot of Fab ain't streets. never had really like a cold streak. Yeah. Like no, over a 15 years, no, like he always, always had something <laughs> that was dope. The only bad thing people have already said, always said about Fab is he makes dope mixtapes with bullshit albums. I can't but even every say that. bullshit album that the so-called bullshit album he has three or four hits off of that shit. I I, I, don't, like, I don't get that. I thought Real Talk was one of one of the dopest albums that came out at that time. Which one was that? Real Real, uh, Real Talk had breathe on it. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That, I thought from nothing to something was dope. Yeah. I thought, like I said, I'm a fan fan. I thought Young OG was dope. <laughs> like, Young OG was crazy. That's um, what I'm saying. Like, what's his, what's his very first album? Ghetto Fabulous. That's what had yeah. Can't Deny It. In. And the second one was what? Uh, Street Dreams. Okay, see, those those are the two that put him on that fence. Oh, because okay, okay. His street shit. I mean, outside of keeping the gangster and Can't Deny, you know, like even holler back, Young, he's like, come on, fam, like you dope with this. 
I mean, it was a, it was a club banger. I mean, but you gotta be, you still gotta be smart though, like, cause that yeah. he was signed to Electra at the time. Yeah. Electra gonna say, give me that record. Right, right. Yeah, right. you can do them fifteen records, but I need two. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah now he yeah. can't help who pushed the two. Yeah. It was like Wale when he first dropped. Remember, like uh-huh. when he did the when he did the uh the what was the joint with uh with Lady Gaga. Oh, Pretty Girls. He didn't yeah. want to push those records. Well, Pretty Girls was already a smash in, in, in the DMV area. But yeah, but it was like, so they took it and ran with it, but yeah. he didn't pick that as a yeah, single, yeah, quote yeah. unquote. It was already working. So yeah, was, so, so he was just like, let it ride. Yeah, it was like, uh, we ain't got to put that much work behind it for the label. And while they won that, people sleep on with, with the, what? With the bars? People sleep on while they. Okay. And he even put his in songs for the ladies. Like he'll put something in there, and you be like, "Hold oh, on, say that, play that back." Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah like yeah. you have to like really know your research. Yeah, yeah. while well, <laughs> they say some shit, shout out to the homie. He say some shit. But um, but like I said, just the, like, just the fact that you mentioned Fab, like I just did like um a two hour Fab set just for no reason the day for yesterday. But um, the fact that you can do a two hour Fab set is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. With records that everybody knows. Yeah, and, and, and I mean I did records. Everybody knows that there's some exclusive joints, some unreleased joints, some freestyle joints, some shit people ain't heard probably, but the shit was dope. It's one of them mixes like I go back and listen to. But um, it ain't too many artists you can do that with. Exactly. So so with that being said, as far as you as an artist, as far as personality, what is your longevity goal? I want to be one of the best to do it. I want to be one of the best to say, yo, that man had hits, but that man had bars that okay. man can rap like a lot of people give i look at the man what a lot of people give nelly flat because he saw records but that's Nelly spit though but people don't know that because they didn't hear song number eight they was too busy listening uh, to ride with me uh, yeah i got um i got his first album uh with the country grammar yeah when uh like probably like five or six months before it came out because my, my father used to work with the labels and um, they sent me the album. I think he was on Universal at the time. Yeah. They sent me the album just to get feedback. Um, my, my pops used to do that all the time just so I could give him feedback before he gave them the green light yay and nay before they put the shit out. And I listened to that shit like five times back to back. That's how I usually uh, used to listen to albums back then just to get a feel of everything because sometimes you don't catch everything the first time. Of course. He called me, and he, he always does this. He called me two months later, like, what you think about that? By this point, I done forgot about that album, but then he, I'm like, what you talking about? He's like, I was like, oh, that shit is the shit. But people sleep on that. People did not understand that. But that's the, that's the, but that helps with the artists like today. You got to drop to stay consistent. You got to drop to stay relevant. So, like, you saw on my Instagram, you saw three, four different videos saying yeah. it because I got, of course, to throw it all videos out. We dropping all that video. We dropping all that uncut video. We all dropping right. a verse I did on with my on my protege. Shout out to Artemis Code. We dropping that right. video. We dropping. Then we gonna come back with the apple pie record. Like okay. so, we, we coming with visuals to keep it consistent. So it's like it, you have to stay working. So you have to just feed. You have to almost flood the market with different types of records so they won't just put you in that box of hit pop maker. But I don't know if he can rap. So, so but how, how do you feel about that though? Because um, say ten years ago. Well, not uh, yeah, ten years ago. 